Well, uh, good afternoon, everyone, and, uh, and board members, uh, welcome to the uh, April 22nd uh, meeting of the Edmonton Metropolitan Transit Services Commission Board. I'd like to call the meeting to order here at uh, 101, according to my uh, watch, and uh, and uh, welcome everybody here. As we do, I want to start off our meeting with a land acknowledgement. Um, we, the board, would like to acknowledge the traditional lands for which we are virtually gathered is Treaty 6. We would like to thank the diverse Indigenous peoples whose ancestors' footsteps have marked this territory for centuries, such as Cree, Dene, Soto, Nakutaso, and Blackfoot peoples. We also acknowledge this as the Métis homeland and the homeland of the largest concentration of Inuit south of the 60th parallel. It is a welcoming place for all peoples who come from around the world to share the Edmonton metropolitan region as home. So welcome everybody. And uh, as I said earlier, uh, welcome to the commission board meeting. I'd like to remind all of the board members that we are now recording this meeting and is being live streamed on YouTube uh, for public consumption. And uh, to those who are viewing via YouTube, uh, welcome. And uh, trust you enjoy our meeting this afternoon. Due to the ongoing uh, COVID-19 pandemic, the board members are in each in their respective um, homes or places of work for the duration of this uh, recording. And, and finally, before we get into the business of the meeting, I would like to thank our administration team and our legal counsel for joining us today and to the members uh, again of the public who may be watching on live stream or the recording of this meeting at a later date. So we have a couple of uh, Motions before we really get into the meat of the uh, of the meeting, we need a motion to approve the agenda. Could I have one of uh, the board members move that, please? Thank you, Mayor Ralph. And the motion is that the April twenty second, twenty twenty one agenda be adopted as presented. And if we could use the raise hand uh, uh, thing, I'll call the question. All in favor of the agenda. And I see unanimous uh, recommendation there. That's approved unanimously. And then the second motion is the approval of the minutes of the March 18th regular board meeting. Uh, they were attached to the board package. Any errors or omissions? Seeing none, hearing none. Uh, could I have a board member? Thank you, Justin. I'll call the question. The question is, is that the March 18th, 2021 regular board meeting minutes uh, be approved as presented. All in favor? And again, I see a unanimous uh, response. Thank you, everyone. And that is uh, approved. Moving over to item number four, CEO announcement. Uh, Josh, if you could lead us through the next number of items on the agenda, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. As uh, as you all well know, and uh, has been announced publicly both at a, through a media release and uh, a subsequent press conference, the uh, commission has announced their um, first CEO, who will be joining uh, officially on May 17th, Paul Jankowski, uh, coming from uh, the municipal regional municipality of York as their transportation commissioner, Mr. Chair. I'm not sure if you want to just add some context as to the um, the uh, the process or um, the comments you made earlier around um, the exciting new hire. Well, thank you, uh, Josh. Yeah, I'll take a few minutes to acknowledge publicly that uh, uh, we certainly welcome Paul, and it was my distinct uh, pleasure to introduce him publicly to uh, the group uh, when we did this uh, a week or so ago. Uh, he is not new to the board. We, uh, we went through a long and, and indeed involved process to get to the point where uh, Paul was... Uh, chosen as our chosen candidate to lead our commission. And uh, 
we are happy to invite him here. Uh, we interviewed a host, uh, hate to be a politician and use hyperbole uh, to you. Uh, we interviewed a number of very qualified candidates and, uh, and Paul is the one that we chose in the end. And we are so looking forward to having him come here on March the 17th, so. Great, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so I think with that, um, there'll be uh, just as, I, I don't, maybe we we'll see if any other board members wanna speak to um, the, the news of the CEO, but otherwise there just would be a, um, a motion to accept this update as information. And of course it's the May 17th, uh, Paul will be uh, officially in the role and um, we'll continue to update the board on that process. And there'll be even some board, some items today that speak to some of those logistics. All right, so a motion to uh, accept the material uh, as information. Would somebody care to make that motion? Thank you, Councillor Finstad. Uh, any opening comments, uh, Councillor Finstad? Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just really want to uh, take the opportunity to welcome uh, Paul to the team. As you mentioned, it was a very extensive search and uh, we do believe that we have selected the right candidate at the right time for the uh, Edmonton Transit uh, Service Regional Transit Services Commission, and we're really looking forward to uh, to Paul finally joining us. And uh, it's going to be really exciting times moving forward. So, with that, I was very pleased to make the motion. Very good. Any other uh, board member care to comment? Seeing none, I'll call the question. All in favor? And that is unanimous. Thank you very much. Josh, on to the next. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And I guess this is now item number five, which, which is a general update on uh, kind of all the stand-up activities that are happening with a series of kind of subcategories. And the first one, which was a good segue to the previous item, uh, from the previous item is an update on communications and stakeholder engagement. And so there's been you know, quite a bit going on in that front. On the communication side specifically, we just talked about the um, exciting news of the CEO and, and, and the news of uh, Paul Jankowski's homecoming really to Edmonton. So that's great news that um, we, we marked with the press release and the press conference. And I think Paul has even done some very uh, initial media a bit on that front. Uh, also worth noting, and I think the board already knows about this, is that um, the MTSC has secured some communications and PR support from an external firm to help with things exactly like that press conference. And, and they were instrumental um, in doing that. And so it's uh, been good to have them on on board and on the on the team. Um, to that end, the same firm, Berlin, who's Edmonton based, will be developing a stakeholder engagement and public outreach plan. It's one of their main responsibilities and tasks. And we will expect to be seeing that at um, actually likely the first glimpse of it at uh, your next board meeting. And so on the communications and stakeholder front, um, while there's been quite a bit of activity and outreach already to some key partners, um, it really is beginning in earnest now. And just note that um, we recognize, while this has been a very public process because of the dozens and dozens of times that this has been debated publicly at all of your uh, respective town and city councils, um, there is a point now where this conversation pivots towards engaging with stakeholders and in fact, and also directly with, with uh, the public across the region. Fair enough, thank you. Any questions uh, from the board? Okay. It, was, uh, it was unfortunate actually, uh, from my perspective that the day that we chose to announce Paul, there was uh, another item that captured the headlines. Yes, and uh, and Paul uh, will get his due when he arrives in the Edmonton region, but the, it's too bad it didn't get to wider circulation. Uh, just a question to the board: Did uh, did the issue get raised in your communities at all? Okay. When you say issue, do you mean just the? I wouldn't call it an issue. Do you mean the hiring? Is that what you're talking yeah. about? Sorry? Was there any question to you from your local media around the hiring? 
it yeah, actually did. Yeah, it all positive comments from from residents and that sort of thing that they did see it, but um, no questions. Okay, fair enough. Thank you for that, Sam. All right, carry on. Okay, so we'll, yeah, we'll move on and move from uh, that to some of the banking, finance, and insurance items. And so, as the board knows, is that we're we're moving towards and quite close to establishing the banking provider and platform for the commission. And so, um, there are some proposals in front of the commission right now. Um, between um, banking institutions. And so we expect that in short order to be confirmed. Um, following that um, uh, banking provider selection and the account set up and all those logistics that are required for a new organization, the, the next kind of critical milestone is that member municipalities are then uh, begin to be reimbursed for some of those one-time startup costs um, that were incurred in, in, for, in early days for the EMTSC. Um, either way, whatever uh, we, um, whatever that timing looks like, um, we continue to track um, in a detailed way all of the um, ex expenses and spending that's happening by the commission right now and, and making sure and ensuring that it does align to budget, which it does. And so um, we'll continue to do that as these um, kind of critical steps are taken, but good news that we're very close on, um, on, on a banking institution. And on the insurance side, similarly, we expect something imminently where we have uh, received, sought out and received quotes both on the DNO liability insurance to provide uh, coverage for all of you, um, which we, we've always stated that, you know, you've got quite a bit of coverage in your roles uh, your, as counselors with your respective municipalities, but still good and uh, safe practice to make sure that there was DO, DNO insurance um, at the EMTSC level. And so that's uh, about to be very close on that. And then again, just uh, general commercial liability insurance um, getting that in place, especially um, as it pertains to getting some office space for the new CEO. And so those two, we would expect um, to have news for you uh, very soon. So good progress on all those kind of banking, finance, and insurance fronts. Okay, we'll pause here. Any yep. uh, questions or comments from the board? Okay, seeing none. Uh, I want to acknowledge uh, you, Councillor Walters. Uh, thank you. I recognize. Uh, uh, all right, Josh. Keep, we'll keep moving then. So another big piece of these early startup days is to ensure that the, the new organization has the full suite of policies in place um, to, to run uh, the organization. And so that is from an HR, finance, um, you name it kind of perspective. And so those are being developed, many of which you've already seen in your roles on either the HR or finance committees. And so that policy development work continues. And so that's being done right now. We expect that um, several other, the, the focus right now is going to be a lot of the key um, financial policies. And so work is being done on that right now, uh, which again needs to be done. Those would be things um, that you would kind of expect, like policies around um, um, bank account maintenance, accounts receivable, financial reporting, um, procurement and expenditure policies. So all of those kind of very um, kind of of foundational pieces that need to be in place. And so that work is happening. And similarly on the HR front, there are quite a few that you want in place as you anticipate um, early employees coming in. So that policy work begins. Um, the HR and finance committee members, so all of you really, um, as, you, as has been the kind of practice to date, you'll see those as they're developed at that committee level. And so we'll continue with that. So you'll be fully kept up to date with those. And then on the um, HR uh, side of things, also developing an initial employee compensation structure framework, which includes benefits um, for the CEO to consider. We wanna ensure that the CEO is got a full 
uh, kind of picture of what the, the, you know, the comparables are across the region at the various municipalities and to get a sense of, of what compensation standards and levels look like um, as he begins to consider people to add to the commission. So that framework is being developed um, quite, a, quite advanced and will be in place for, um, for an incoming CEO. So maybe I'll pause there. Um, for any questions relating to kind of the, all the, the suite of policy development or the, the HR framework. Okay. Well, seeing none, uh, we'll move right on to we'll the keep, next. We'll keep, we'll keep motoring. Again, a lot of this, uh, because of, we, we tried to make the practice of, of updating you all at the committees. I think my, a lot of this has been seen before there. So um, thank you all for kind of doing that work in between board meetings too. Um, on the technology side, again, um, making some, some tangible progress on uh, the payroll and financial accounting systems. Uh, the one thing you've heard from us and will continue to repeat was that we wanna make sure that um, any system we um, put in place is scalable as the organization grows. There's flexibility around that and flexibility in a couple different ways. One is that it allows you to grow, of course, and then the system to grow with the organization. But the second part of flexibility is making sure that you're not bound commercially or contractually um, in a way that would burden an incoming CEO or the board in any way. And, and lastly, and I think probably the most important is to ensure that we're, we're looking at cost-effective solutions um, for the organization. And so with that in mind, um, and again, as, as discussed and reviewed by the HR and Comp Committee and the Audit and Finance Committee, um, we're landing and moving forward on a payroll solution. So obviously we need that for very practical reasons, especially with um, employee number one coming in later in May and, and just as important financial accounting package um, so that um, we can all keep to the kind of the financial tracking, budgeting, um, and reporting, and the, that level of transparency that um, and, and fiscal management that you would all expect. So, um, good progress on 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 the technology front and those systems we expect to be in place in short order. Well, good work. Um, you know, it's always interesting every time you do these updates. Uh, Josh is is just the magnitude of what it is to set up an organization that is intended to be as large as the commission one day will be. It is not an inconsequential <laughs> activity. Yeah. So uh, thank you for uh, you and EY and uh, and all of the efforts uh, that have been uh, put forward to get us to this point. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of little details. So um, getting all that in place and I really want to thank the, the board members kind of we, we warned you and said that um, typically boards don't get into this level of depth of some of these of some of this subject matter. But I know that uh, we also said because it's a, a startup organization, we, we kind of would lean on all of you more. So appreciate all of you being able to uh, kind of give the oversight and uh, feedback on, on all these elements through the committee work and here at the board. So it's certainly appreciated. It will be a load off my mind when we can actually start to pay the bills. <laughs> <laughs> Very soon. <laughs> all right. Uh, so board members, there's a motion uh, before us to uh, accept the update as information. Would somebody care to make that motion? Thank you, Councillor McKenzie, uh, that the board accept the material and discussion is presented during the update on the EMTSC stand up as information. Care to make any opening comments? Uh, not, nothing for me other than I just support this. Thank you very much. Any other comments from the board? Seeing nothing, uh, I'll call the question then. Uh, all in favor of the motion? And that is carried unanimously. Thank you very much, everyone. And we'll move on to the next item. Thanks, Josh. Thanks, Mr. Chair. So again, a good segue into this item. Many of the things we just updated you on, in fact, uh, is uh, kind of reflect the good work that's happening at the committee level. And so while um, uh, you all through the board and at the committees uh, have shaped the terms of reference 
by which the, the committees run or terms under which they run. Um, uh, the bylaws do um, call for the board to actually give final approval to those terms of reference. So again, nothing new here, nothing that you haven't seen. The committees are already up and, and running um, and certainly are valuable to be able to kind of dig into some of these topics. Um, and, and again, always expect that the work of the committees will still be available to the board and all made public on the website. But for the terms of reference um, that you all helped co-design, um, it does require kind of a board endorsement here uh, today. And so we're hoping to get a motion uh, to approve the terms of reference for both committees that have been set up and are running. All right. Uh so before we actually uh, get to the uh, terms of reference, I just want to give uh, airspace to uh, the two chairs of the committees uh, if they choose to say anything. So Councillor Laurie or Councillor Harris, any comments? Um, I, I would just thank all of the hard work uh, done by our support team. Um, they did uh, yeoman's work to create the terms of reference. Uh, obviously, uh, uh, our team on HR and compensation, I think, had a, a smooth uh, meeting as a result of the terms of reference we were using to guide the process. So my thanks. And uh, I think it's a well-written document and uh, look forward to uh, adopting both terms of reference. Thank you, Councillor Harris. Councillor Laurie? Yeah, thank you. And I would echo a lot of Councillor Harris's comments. Uh, the great work that was done by our administrative working team and support team that we have in place uh, made this a nice painless process for the uh, for the committee. So it was great to have everybody's eyes on it, make sure we had a good review of it and uh, able to present it and bring it forward here today. Okay. Well, I have you then, uh, Councillor Laurie. Would you like to move this uh, motion? Certainly, I can do that, Mr. Chair. So I move that the board approve the audit and finance committee terms of reference and the HR and compensation terms of reference documents as presented in this report and that have been endorsed by each committee. Okay, that's not exactly what's on the screen, but I know where you got it from. Uh, all right, any opening comments, sir? Uh, no, nope. again, already kind of said it there. Appreciate all the work that's gone into these on, on both committees and uh, on behalf of the board, obviously. So I look forward to uh, moving forward past this and getting the initial steps out of the way. And, and as uh, Mr. Cole already mentioned, uh, assisting with the work that we can until such a time as we have a team built up that uh, can take it from there. Thank you. Any other board members choose to enter comment? Seeing none, I'll call the question. All in favor of the motion before us? Thank you very much. That's carried unanimously. Now we're going to move into the in-camera section of our meeting. Uh, uh, Councillor uh, or a uh, board member choose to make this motion for us. Thank you, Councillor Harris. You want to read the motion in? I would move that the board um, move in camera in accordance with the provisions of Digi Division Two exceptions to disclosure of the Freedom of Information Protection and Privacy Act, FOIP, RSA 2000, Chapter F-25, as per Sections 16 through 28. Perfect. Call the question. All in favor? And that's carried unanimously. Uh, we are now in camera. We'll wait a couple of minutes to uh, uh, ensure we're uh, adequately uh, in camera, if you will. I have resumed recording. May I please confirm uh, who motioned to move out of camera? I did, Ray Ralph, Mayor Ralph. Thank you, Mayor Ralph. Okay, do we, Mr. Chair, do we have everybody present? 
seem, well, I'm just trying to expand my screen for now. So when you leave the room, leave the room, don't leave the meeting like I just did. <laughs> We've all done it. <laughs> Welcome back. Right. Wasn't that a test? <laughs> So the motion to uh, reconvene in public was made by Mayor Ray Ralph, carried unanimously. Thank you, and we've noted that in the minutes. Oh, okay. All right. So. So, Mr. Chair, we're moving on to then with that motion moved. Um, we're moving on to the next item, which is the borrowing bylaw. Okay. So we have the bylaw in front of us. We have a motion though. Uh, is, I believe it's a three part motion do we have or? Uh, yeah, yeah. So what, what you have in front of you is the, the bylaw, the borrowing bylaw itself, bylaw number three uh, to allow the commission to borrow uh, funds and enter into borrowing agreements. Uh, so we have reviewed that. You have had it in your uh, information packages, and we have the motion up on the screen here now uh, for you to uh, take a look at and uh, consider. All right. So a reminder to the board that uh, that this is indeed a special motion. Uh, uh, we're all here. So, uh, and should it not be anonymous, of course, we'll work through the issue. But uh, nonetheless, could I have uh, someone uh, move this motion? Councillor Finstad, uh, care to read it into the uh, record? Thank you, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> I move that the board approve bylaw three, a bylaw authorizing borrowing line of credit, the Empton Metropolitan Tran Transit Service Commission as presented at the April 22nd, 2021 board meeting. Thank you, accept that motion. Uh, any opening comments? No, it just lets us get on with our business of, of getting on. So I'm very fully supportive of it. Fair enough. Any other member of, uh, of the uh, board care to chime in? All right, uh, on that case, I'll call the question using the raise the hand function. All in favor? And that is carried unanimously. Thank you very much. Uh, moving on to the next motion. So here we have a motion to approve borrowing uh, and establish credit facilities. So you have that in front of you here. Okay. Uh, ultimately referring back to the information that was discussed in, and presented in camera. All right. I can move this. Thank you Chair very much, Councillor Walters. You wanna read it into the record then? Uh, I'll, I'll move that the board A approve the borrowing, the lender, and the general terms of the revolving line of credit and associated credit facilities recommended in the report received during the closed portion of the board meeting on April 22nd, 2021. B require the commission to keep the report confidential under section 16, 19, 23, 24, and 25 of the Freedom of Information Protection of Privacy Act, such to subparagraph commission to make the name of the lender public after appropriate notification to applicants. Standing. Except that, any uh, opening comments? Speaks for itself. Thank you very much. Any other board member choosing to comment? Seeing none, using the raise the hand function, I'll call the question. All in favor? And again, unanimous. Thank you very much. Moving on to the third motion. Uh, so the motion here in front of you now uh, is requesting the support from Edmonton and St. Albert to uh, provide security under the terms of the uh, banking and borrowing that was uh, just approved under the previous motion. Okay. Maybe it would be appropriate for me to make this as well. <laughs> Indeed it would, sir. Okay. Go ahead, Sir Walters. Uh, not to hog all the motioning today, but... Um, okay. Uh, I'll move that the board uh, requests that the city of Edmonton and the city of St. Albert provide security to the lender approved under the resolution EMTSC-21-26 in the form of, uh, in the form required by the lender, which security may be a letter of credit or a guarantee as the city of Edmonton and the city of St. Albert respectively deem appropriate and B, commit the commission to reimburse the city of Edmonton and the city of St. Albert for any direct cost, fees and or interest incurred to provide and maintain security required from each of them by the lender. 
Thank you very much for that, uh, Councillor Walters. Uh, any opening comments? I have none. Okay. Councillor Finstad. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just want to thank both the City of Edmonton and City of St. Albert for stepping up and, and uh, taking this on on behalf of the Commission. And uh, for the rest of us, our municipalities, uh, we really appreciate those efforts in, in making sure that uh, financially we become sound and able to carry on. So thank you very much to uh, both City of Edmonton and City of St. Albert. Thank you, Councillor Finstead. Any other comments? See none. Any closing comments, Councillor Walters? Yeah, no, none. I guess you're yeah. welcome. We'll see how the motion goes. How the <laughs> vote goes. All right. Using the raise the hand function, all in favor? And that's uh, carried unanimously. Thank you very much. Uh, the insurance motion, you want to walk us through this, Al? Uh, certainly. So motion here in front of you, uh, uh, requesting EMTSC administration to procure both directors and officer and commercial general liability insurance uh, as the motion states based on a competitive uh, quotation process and under appropriate commercial terms. So. All right. So who would like to make this motion? I can Dr. do that. No. Oh, sorry. That's okay. Councillor Harris can do it. I thought I saw oh. your hand there, Councillor Harris. Uh, it's probably swatting flies, but uh, I'd be glad to introduce this motion. Uh, therefore, I would demotion, I would move that the board direct DMTSC administration procure both directors and officers liability insurance and commercial general liability insurance based on a competitive quotation process with terms, conditions, and pricing that reflect the needs of the commission and are commercially appropriate and that the acting CAO be authorized to enter in such agreements on behalf of the EMTSC. Thank you very much. I accept that motion. Any opening comments? Just that it's uh, obviously a requirement to ensure that we have appropriate uh, liability coverage for general matters. And I think uh, to protect the directors and the officers in the performance of their duties as, uh, as, as we represent the board going forward. So I think it's just a, a normal course of business. And, uh, you know, I acknowledge the work that the administration has been doing to get us to this, to this point. Fair enough. Any other uh, board member choosing to comment? Okay, seeing none, using the raise the hand function, I'll call the question, all in favor? And that's carried unanimously. Thank you very much, everyone. And just your final motion, accepting the material and discussions that presented in camera that, that we didn't have motions on uh, already. Okay. Uh, who hasn't made a motion yet today? <laughs> Councillor Monkoff Swain, would you care to make this motion? Yeah, I'd to. Uh, so I'll move that the board accept the material and discussion as presented in camera as information. Okay, accept that. Any uh, opening comments? No opening comment from me. Thank you, Chair. All righty. Any other board member choosing to comment? Seeing none, I'll call the question. Uh, all in favor, raise the hand. And that is carried unanimously. Thank you very much. All right. Where are we on the agenda here? That's the final item on the agenda. Well, good timing. Good work, everyone. We're, uh, we managed our time well. And uh, unless somebody chooses to tell me otherwise, I guess uh, I'd be pleased to adjourn the meeting. Thanks, everybody. Have a good Thanks, day, everyone. <laughs> good day. All right, meeting adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Have a great weekend. Stay warm. <laughs> All right, Take thank care, you, everyone. everyone. Bye. Bye.